Welcome back to Random American, and we're back to axes. As you can see, today we are working on an axe, and this is an old Stanley with an M stamp. I have no idea when it was made. I uh, didn't really care. I uh, picked this up off a friend of mine for not very much, and he picked it up at a flea market for like five bucks, I think. This, as far as I can tell, is a new old, well, not a new old stock, an original handle on it. Somebody got it into something or did something dumb with it right here. It does not have your traditional nails and washers running into the top of it. It also doesn't have too much mushrooming on the top, and it does not look like it's been sharpened even once. All very good things. Uh, today is going to be pretty straightforward and simple. I'm just going to take the handle out of this, going to clean it up real nice, going to bring some life back into it, you know? Just go ahead and water wheel this all off and clean it up and sharpen it up. Maybe touch the pole up just a touch because this is going to be the first and I shouldn't say many, but I have a few axes that I really want to get together. This one is going to be part of the Cordwood Challenge this year. I'm going to see how this cuts compared to the next boy's axe that I have. If you can figure out what the next boy's axe is and put it down in the comments, I might send you a sticker. Because I know what it is. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to change my mind. So if somebody goes down there and says, hey, is it this? I'll send you a sticker or something. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But let's hop on into it. I'm going to bring you in here. I'm going to show you what tools I think I'm going to use. And then we'll see what tools I actually end up using. And we're just going to jump right into this. I've been waiting to do an axe video for quite a while. All right. So starting from left to right, we have my Milwaukee drill with a little wire cut brush. Uh, stone, strop, hammer with a screwdriver and well, screwdriver and a bolt. The bolt will actually be to help drive that out. That's an old uh, head, head bolt from that LS. My pliers to maybe pull the wedge out if I need to. C clamp for whenever we get to sharpening and trimming. And then this is oh, let me move this over some. This is the only thing you really have to have to do your profiling and cleaning that up and all that. But, but you know, I have it, so yeah, we'll use it to probably change that belt, though. So, yeah, this is the basic setup. Um, let's just go ahead and start with trying to get that wedge out and knock the handle out of this thing, because I am using that handle. It's slightly screwed up, but I don't really care. Let's see if I can just... Probably where I should use that C clamp that I just got, but I'm not. Just work it from both sides. I'm sorry, this is not a screwdriver, it is a chisel get those confused. Okay. Let's see. I'm trying not to tear up the top of that handle too much. And this is loose. That's the whole reason why I'm doing this at all or else I just leave the handle in it. With being as old as it is, I don't exactly blame it. Two hours later. Now 
Now, that's not an old wedge. I don't know what is. Now to see if I can even get the rest of it out. Oh, and that comes out easy. Of course it does. I thought this had teeth forged into the eye. It does not. Oh, there's some more wedge. I should have just left it alone, I guess. Just swing it without the wedge in it. There we go. It's a lot harder of a process than I thought it was going to be. Okay. You can see a little bit of a lip right here. Whenever they rain her down on there, they didn't much care. So I'm going, I will go ahead and take that, or I'll go ahead and take that down whenever we get to it. I'm going to work on the head first. Oh, they did have some glue in here. That would explain some stuff. But yep, let's work on the head. Okay, my, so my main strategy for this is just a little bit of WD-40. And then this softer uh, wire brush for the end of my drill. And we're just going to go on it real easy. Start to get a little dry. Hit her with some more. Okay, let's get her wiped off. Oh yeah, looking better already. I'm just gonna keep running along here until I can get most of the rough stuff off. I'll kick the speed up here in just a second and flip it around, get this up here. You kinda wanna be careful on the stamp, but we'll get to that in just a minute. This cleaned up, nothing crazy. So having a stamp here and using a steel brush, I'm gonna keep this on one and take her nice and easy. I'm not gonna go too hard on it. If you have something that has a really delicate stamp, you wanna use a brass cup and WD-40 and just real slow and methodical and it'll come right out.
Also, if you don't want to use WD-40, if you have old uh, transmission fluid, that works pretty good too. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say old engine oil, but like power steering fluid and stuff like that. Do not use brake fluid. That stuff attracts moisture and it'll make things so much worse. So I'll work around that edge right there a little more and this edge over here some and that'll be just about it. gone right there. Okay, for me that's good enough. I just want to clean it up a little bit. Oh, I have some more right there. I might need to get didn't even see that. Why'd you tell me? So we went from that right there to that. I mean, it's not perfect. But it ain't bad, you know? So I'm going to go ahead and clean up this side. Same story, different side. Nothing crazy about this, except I don't have to really worry about a stamp over here. So I can be as hard on this one as I want to. And then we'll be right back with getting the top and the bottom. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. All right, so this is my setup this time. As you can see, it's just one C-clamp clamp to that one there and it works if you didn't know about that little trick well congratulations you are now more dangerous to yourself so let's get on in here and do some damage and it's much the same as the top and bottom except i'm running out of battery rapidly I'm not going to do this to the top because I'm going to do something different with it. And I don't want to go down and get a battery. Okay, 
Yeah, see, that's awesome. Next, we'll move on to cleaning up these edges and cleaning up the pole. All right, well, if you guessed that I was going to use a file next, you're right. Okay, you don't have to do that, but you get a little bit more crap out of it initially. It might clog it up later. So, I'm just going to go real gentle along here. And you can kind of, it'll help you see the high spots a little bit if you can't already see them. I'm just going to work my way straight along. I have a little bit of an angle on it, just so I'm tilted away from that stamp. Because, man, they put it up there close. I'm really glad nobody was really mean to this thing because boy it's in good shape and that's a really nice looking stamp. You can work from the other way too if you want to. Just keep a little bit of a angle away. I'm not normally a huge stamp guy but that's making a believer out of me. Just double checking how close I'm getting. I got a little ways. And again, you can get this and just run her straight sideways if you want. But on this one, I need a little bit more control. Now I'm flattening it out some more, so I know exactly where the bulge has started and stopped. Down here, it's completely gone. I just have a little section up here to touch just a hair and not get greedy with it. <clears throat> That's a big thing. Don't get greedy. Uh, get as much as you can, but people have... Uh, lost the value of axes just because they wanted to get a little bit more, get a little bit more, get a little bit more. Let's see. The rest of this I'm probably just going to go ahead and do on the belt grinder. I just needed to know exactly where I was on this. And it's really easy to tell the file marks versus the grinder marks because they'll be more uniform and they'll be in a completely different direction. So I'll go ahead and fire it up. And we'll get to working on that pole, make it nice, slick, and new again. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and keep the dirty, nasty belt on there. Because it's going to not be nearly as aggressive, and I don't need much to take these burrs off. And I do have hearing, protect hearing protection in. So make sure you do that if you're using these. They're louder than what you think.
All right, took a quick break so I could go get some water to uh, dip the back of that in. It was starting to get a little warm, and my fingers don't like that. It wasn't going to hurt the axe any, but my little phalanges were getting burnt because I'm a sissy. Something very, 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 very interesting happened that I have never seen before, but I haven't restored a whole lot of axes, so, you know, maybe. Oh, no. Okay. So maybe it's normal. Let's see if I can show you. Oh, it's not showing up. Maybe a little. Okay, right there. You see that? That off, slightly off color spot? There's that and a whole bunch of little dots throughout here that have showed up and they don't grind out. I don't know if it's different. Uh, if it's a difference in the steel, it wasn't pure steel or what was going on but that's super interesting i'm going to stop grinding right there i got one little dot up there but i ain't too worried about it and i'm not sure if that's where some of those rust dots came from or what but now i'm just going to go through here and put like a 45 all the way around and knock the corners down and then we're going to do the same thing to the top here so i'll run it along along this and we're going to polish up the top just a little bit and we're going to blend it in with the rest of it. So that's the part that's a little bit different. And we'll be working on the handle next. This is actually going pretty decent so far. Cleaning my phalanges off. All right. I have the top of this cleaned up as good as I'm going or want to on this because I don't have any finer belts. But I do have emery cloth and I do hate myself. So I'm going to get emery cloth, probably a stick, and I'm just going to go back and forth on this for the rest of time. Well, for right now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave that how it is. I got the top shined up pretty good. Got the corners knocked down. You can actually see where the hardened line is. It's about right here, right at the end, <clears throat> right at the end where all the uh, that rust pitting ends. And I can feel it with the file. It it almost skates this file. It really doesn't like cutting it. So I thought that was pretty cool. So where is it again? Oh, right there. So that much of this is hardened. That's a lot of life left in this. Like I said, I don't think this thing's ever been sharpened or hardly even used. But putting this to the side for a second, moving on to the handle. I don't think I'm gonna get too crazy with this. I'll probably get my pocket knife and shave this back a little bit to where I can seat that in just a little bit more. Um, here in a little bit, I'll cut this down just a little bit further so I can get a wedge in there a little farther. I'm probably going to use a soft wedge instead of a hardwood wedge because it'll conform to this a lot better and it'll fill up gaps a lot better. If I have glue, I'll glue it, but I think I might just use this. This thing seemed to be in there pretty tight. Almost, almost ruined the screwdriver. Uh, also, I'm going to sand this down real good, just some emery cloth. Nothing crazy. And I have some linseed oil sitting up there. I'll throw some linseed oil on it. I'm not trying to do anything super crazy, super fancy. This is just getting an old axe that still has a workable handle and making it look a little bit nice, make it sharp enough to shave a gnat's ass and go out and use it. That's all this, 
That's all this little Stanley right here needs. That's all the more this thing's gonna want. So, let's get after it. I will have a axe that I do some cool stuff with. And if you're wondering if this is really good hickory or if my knife's dull, my knife's dull, I was using it to scrape uh, metal. Uh, let me get a sharper knife. I'll be back. And I'm back with a Mora knife. And then I got my other, one of my other pocket knives there. Oh yeah. That's the stuff. Woo. Pro tip, don't cut your thumb off. All I'm doing is taking the shoulder down. Nothing crazy. If anybody at all would be interested in a head-to-head -head between new axes, old axes, and all that, uh, let me know what you'd like to see in said challenges. And I'll see what I can do. Because I have a couple of axes that I have, have in mind for practical use. And just your everyday person can go and get fairly easy. Not the uh, super expensive uh, Liam Hoffmans and Lamacas and the list goes on any custom maker you can think of, like Conrad Blacksmithing and stuff like that. But just regular axes, whether it's vintage, whether it's new. Uh, but I got a few axes I have in mind. I just don't know exactly what I would like to do to test them. I don't know, I don't know. We'll figure it out. I don't have anything too scientific. And I have a draw knife that I could do this with, but you don't have to have a draw knife. Just a good old pocket knife. Or in this case, a small $15 fixed blade. Uh, this Mora knife, this is what I keep in my work truck and what I take to the farm most of the time because I can just beat the brakes clean off of it and man, is it sharp. And it holds an edge pretty decent. Uh, I, just, I just like it and it's cheap. It's $15 with a little sheath in it and it works. Like, it actually does things. Yeah. Is it the prettiest? No. Neither am I. But it works, and so do I. Okay. Just got that shoulder knocked down. I'll take a little bit more right here. I don't want to go lower than what this already is, because that was seated pretty good on that head. I just want to kind of blend it together a little bit. All right, so we're going to take the magic that is emery cloth. We're going to clean it up a little bit. Uh, you can just as easily grab your mora and scrape her this way. Uh, Wrangler Stars, where I got this one from, way, way, way back. And that works pretty good. But I got some emery cloth here. You can use 80 grit sandpaper. Uh, and take it down to a, uh, I wouldn't go much lighter than a 100 and, 120, 150. Because you still want a little bit to hold on to. And I ain't trying to make it perfect or anything like that. I'm just going to clean it up. Make it look, make it look sexy again, you know? See right here, they had a sticker on it. And I'm just gonna 
we're going to lightly scrape that off. That's another reason why I think this is all original, not been used, because that sticker was still there. I couldn't read it, but that little sticker was still on this thing. And if you used any kind of an axe for any length of time, you know that a lot of times that stuff goes rather quickly. But I saw this and I pretty well fell in love with it. Oh, something I didn't mention on this. The grain is not how most people want it. And because it's, you know, at an angle about that. And it's a lot wider than most people. Oh, wait a minute. Nope. Nope. I'm lying. That is holy crap. Those are just such heavy saw marks. I thought that was the grain. Oh no, this thing has textbook grain. Oh yeah, very tight, straight up and down grain, very textbook. But what I was gonna say, and I still stand by it, still stand by it. Um, most of the time, if you have a grain pattern that is mostly sideways, and you don't have a whole lot of rod running, or you don't have a whole lot of grain run out on it, you're gonna be just fine. Because what really gets you is whenever the grain comes across and it doesn't have a long connection for most of the handle. That's what really screws people up. And I think it's 19 inches and under for a handle. Zero difference. You will not notice a difference in the, stru or the strength of your handle at all. Now, is it ideal to have a 90 degree grain? No. Do I care? No. It'll work just fine. This one has a knot right here, and the grain kind of comes over and then back and then centered again. If I break this handle, it's because I did something to it. Unless there's some stuff going on in here, but I really don't see that happening between you, me, and the trees. And this is about how I like my handles too. Mostly straight, slight curve. Awesome. So let's see, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and linseed oil this real good and let it set for a minute. And we'll get this set on. I need to make a wedge, which I'm gonna have to find what I wanna make a wedge out of then make the wedge because the hardware store's closed and I want to get this vidgy up tomorrow. So I didn't help myself any. Let's get after it. Oh god. That is... It was on there. Oh, I swear not to do that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Now you can't tell me that doesn't look good. I mean, you could, but you'd be lying. Line. I know you're not supposed to get this stuff on your hands, but I don't care. Get the chunks of stuff off of it. Yeah, that's that's the good stuff.
this is a very thirsty handle. All of that, it just absorbed it. Notch. Even the notch looks good. Maybe I'm biased because I liked this before I even started. All right. I won't call me out if you don't. Now that is a handle. That's a working handle. Believe it or not, favorite. The favorite will be coming up. Not in this episode. It's on its way. Alright, well, it is a few hours later, mostly because of dinner, but I have a wedge made from this, turned into this, kind of, then down to that. And then down to this. So, how I did my wedge? Easiest way possible. You just get it to where it'll just barely squeeze into your head. And you'll figure out how far down inside of there you're willing to let it go. For me, uh, I don't know, just over three quarters of the way. It won't actually go that far down in. But I made it to where it's possible. Then I brought my kerf down to where it could at least mostly accommodate for that. So I got, so this wedge is a piece of poplar, super, super, super soft. You can buy poplar wedges and I re really recommend you to do that, but I didn't plan any of this. So I'm just kind of rushing everything if we're being honest this video is going to come out late i was expecting it to come out tomorrow which is sunday it probably won't it'll probably be monday because i'll need time to edit but this video will come out and then i'll start working on another axe video or something i don't know pretty pretty quick anyway uh just make sure that it's going to fit down in there without you having to really beat on it because if you have to beat on it here then chances are you're not actually going to get a good fit in your handle your handle does not have to be an overwhelming amount of force to get it drove on there you just need it snug all the way around and you need as much contact with the head as you can feasibly get it's not going to be perfect uh, if you drive a wedge down into it tight enough if your wedge is good and you drive it in tight enough you're going to be fine and hopefully that i'm correct about all that because i've drove a bunch of heads on and i've had a few come loose on me a lot of times i do a cross wedge which i'm not going to do on this one i might do it on the next one but i really like cross wedges and I'm going to, as always, yeah, God, I'm going to glue it in. Ooh, this is not my preferred glue. This glue is pretty old. So if this comes loose because of the glue, then I'll get the glue that I normally like and go from there. But before I do all this, I'm going to go ahead and sharpen this up. And it's the same way as you use a stone, but it's going to be a little faster. I'm going to use this. Uh, definitely getting a new belt, my god. But, uh, nope, I'm just taking a real nice uh, pass on it. I'll figure out what's high and what's low and go from there. Create a burr on both sides, get it down as far as I can, get my stone, 
run my stone across it, run my strop across it, and she'll be done. Uh, if you have a little belt grinder, it's a lot easier. You don't have to have one. Uh, I can use a file just fine, like I've showed you. But for time reasons, I'm going to go ahead and use that. And yeah, we'll get this thing wrapped up. This thing will take some more tender love and care. But for right now, we're going pretty good. Where's my hair plugs? There we go. Take two. Okay, so you can see how this is an uneven point. Like, that's flatter, and then it curves, and then it curves. So I'm going to go ahead and run it flat on here a little bit and reshape it just a tad. And we'll keep going from there, and it'll get rid of that little bit of a nick. So I'll kind of reshape that a little bit how I like it, and we'll keep moving. Okay, not sure how well you can see that, but I got it blended all the way back to here. It's still kind of a fatter profile, but I'm going to have to basically see how this thing cuts and how it likes it. And I might end up thinning this thing way the hell back, because I think it can take it the way the steel acts. But right now I'm just going to go ahead and throw my other belt on, clean that up just a little bit more, and then start with the stone. Because this belt's pretty well wore out, so it should be a much finer finish. But you have to watch out because these get hot because there's not a lot left of them. Okay, I have this hair popping sharp. I have my handle and my glues ready as it's going to be. Uh, get this wiped off real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the head on here and drive it down about as far as I can. And then uh, I'll put my, put some glue down there, just fill that up as much as I possibly can. Put glue about anywhere I can get it. And then put glue on my wedge and hammer my wedge in. So let's start off with this. Let's put it on upside down. Make me look like a moron. See, I took just the shoulder off and it's already creating another one, but it's sticking up much further than it was, so this is already a pretty good sign. Alrighty. It won't be perfect, but I think it's going to hold up okay. As long as this glue holds. Like I said, I've never used this. Normally I use Type Bond 3, the blue Type Bond. Oh God. This stuff might not do anything. Oh, that's not good. Oh, well, we're already here. It's also hard to tell how old that glue is. Nope, it is just thicker than hell. I promise I don't have a weak grip. Not particularly. That is the thickest wood glue I've seen in my life. because this particular wedge is directional. Maybe. 
Okay. And then you get her set down on something. Preferably, preferably a little more solid than a wood floor. I may have made my wedge a little too thick. That's always a risk. That's cracked my wedge, it's okay. Cracked wedge is only ugly, it doesn't actually do anything. I'm gonna take this off my anvil. Actually, Let's see if I can hammer it in more. Okay, so that's as far as I can get this. Which I went extra aggressive on it. So, you can see my wedge split in a bunch of different places and it's crooked and all that. That don't matter at all. So I'm going to get my hacksaw and I'm going to cut across the top of that, even it up a little bit. I don't particularly like having them flush with the top of the head, but we'll see. Okay, so right there you can see what I mean about doing a, using a soft wedge for a handle that has already been hung. Because you can see how much gap it had to fill over in here and why it's split right there. So it's actually kind of crazy to me to think that it came all the way over there and filled all that up. So what I might do is get that metal wedge, see if I can drive it in here after this glue dries. But I'm pretty happy with it. You can see it rolled just a little bit right there, which not, not the worst. I don't, oh, I don't see any gaps in it. Not that I can show you because of the lighting is the exact opposite over here, but it looks good. It's sharp. Might see about uh, swinging it a little bit. Or might see about swinging it a little bit there tomorrow. So, I'm happy with it. Handle's a little thin, but it's nothing you can't get used to. That notch, I don't think it's going to get in the way for anything. I'm pretty happy with it. This is a legitimate textbook boy's axe. And I'll oil it a couple more times tonight, actually. Oh! I need to do something fancy with this. Alrighty, well, that's going to do it for the, I guess, Fawn's foot on this. I kind of bulbed it, kind of didn't. I don't know. I'm probably going to knock these corners down with the emery cloth. I was going to do something fancy, but it's like midnight, and i got to be up early. So, yep, I'm just going to clean this up a tickle. I'm going to go ahead and oil the handle, everything but up here, because I want to let this dry tonight and get to bed because i got stuff to do tomorrow okay so i'm out here with like 13 minutes before it rains and we're going to go ahead and give this thing a few test swings just so i can make some chips fly i got the top of it oiled a little bit and <clears throat> we'll wrap this up see how she cuts
so far so great let's wrap this thing up well i think that wraps us up uh this thing actually cut a lot better than i expected it would those are just some test chops you're gonna see more of this puppy in the future i might make a sheet for this or i might get a hold of a buddy of mine that does kydex because i might just have this as a truck axe because it definitely deserves it uh the next one that we're going to be doing the next boys axe i think might cut a little better again if you have a guess go ahead and leave it in the comments if you can guess what it is before the next video comes out well before the not the next video but the uh, video that i'm doing the next boys axe on uh i will send you a sticker of some sort or stickers or i don't know something i find lying around something you might like but uh yeah, this thing's very, very impressive, very solid, uh, hasn't moved yet, and I couldn't be happier with it. This thing's fantastic. So, I'll see you guys on the next one, and I hope you have a wonderful day. 26-inch handle. I only prefer 28. That does pretty damn good.